Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video where I go back and edit a photo that I took in 2011 and I did take a bit of a trip down memory lane with this one because this is the first time I've even accessed my hard drive from this time in my life in years and years. I can't even remember the last time that I would have seen any photos on this drive so uh, it's been a while because <laughs> previous videos I've mainly just kind of pulled from DeviantArt, some of my older work. So to go through some of my older work was very interesting. I think sometimes it's really hard to tell if you've improved and when you're improving sometimes with photography and sometimes it feels like you just, you're not improving at all. Uh, but definitely after looking back on these photos, I feel that I have improved <laughs> since 2011, which is a good thing. Before we get into the video today, I just wanna let you guys know that I have released two new action sets and a couple of more bundles on my website. So the first set that I have released is the Golden Glow presets for Photoshop. Really nice for your warm tone images or anything that you want to have that really nice golden glow. And the other set that I have released is another Photoshop action set for CC, a set of color bases. They're just kind of like a funky color collection of presets. And I've also got two new bundles. So my new bundle is the Color Grading Beauty Bundle, which is the two new color grading action sets that I've just mentioned in one. And then I also have the Ultimate Beauty Bundle. So that is including all of my beauty actions on my website. It's a total of 29 Photoshop actions and includes a free dodge and burn workflow action as well. So if you're interested in purchasing any of these actions, just follow the link in the description to my website at kayleejune.com. I have chosen a photo today from 2011 and it was one of my first photo shoots. It's not my first photo shoot with a model, but it's definitely one of the first, I would say, five photo shoots I ever did with a model and a makeup artist. So you guys can take a little look into the kind of photography that I used to do. Obviously it's very different now. I don't really uh, do a lot of location stuff, but that was all I did when I was first starting out and then the years um, after that. So I'm gonna get straight into looking through the shoot first, because I really want you guys to see some of the work that I produced back then. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm totally proud of it, by the way. <laughs> There's definitely images there that I'm kind of like, what was I, what was I doing? So I wanna go through this particular photo shoot because I feel like there was just like no no set theme whatsoever. Uh, the model Oshina, I actually used to work with a lot when I was just starting out and she was just starting out as a model as well. So we were kind of, felt like we were kind of on the same level at the time. So it's definitely a bit of, uh, it's an interesting photo shoot. Let me put it that way. I mean, looking through these images at the moment, I'm, I just, there's no, there's no theme. There's no rhyme or reason to the styling, especially the styling like back then. I just really had no idea. So looking through, I mean, there's a lot of, I did notice that there's a lot of blurry images. I really didn't have any idea about focus points or anything like that back then. I just kind of snapped away. This was kind of before I was in uh, college and really learnt the basic manual functions of my camera. I did kind of know the basics when I was doing this kind of work, but like, yeah, I really just didn't know what I was doing lighting wise as well. You can see in the photos um, that I'll show you, the, the lighting is not great. Um, take this one for example. I actually used to shoot a lot in midday uh, back then. As you can probably see from these images, they are very, oh, there's a very blurry one. Another really, really blurry one. They're just not lit very well. I mean, I didn't really understand the whole, you know, look at the shadows in that photo. It's, it's all part and parcel, I guess, of learning how light looks in an image and how how it falls on someone's face as well. I just really didn't have much clue about that back then. Also, you'll notice that a lot of my images are very, very underexposed. Um, I really liked to do that for some reason. I don't really know why, uh, <laughs> but there's definitely, I mean, we've got a clock in this photo. So I don't really know what the theme was. I think if I can sort of guess as to what I was kind of thinking on the lines of back then, because I was very much into DeviantArt back then and kind of creative conceptual stuff, I might have been wanting to do a bit more of an Alice in Wonderland kind of theme, although the clothing doesn't really suggest that. So, you know, I'm not really sure what a lot of these photos are kind of meant to be. I don't even, I don't even. Okay, so I'm gonna go further down and show you, because like there's a lot of different photos that I took in this. I think I was just really experimenting a lot this day and you know what I would encourage everyone to do that kind of experimentation these photos obviously I don't feel much of an Alice in Wonderland vibe from them at all so this is kind of what I mean with sticking uh, with a theme for the shoot because there really was no set theme um, 
once again, a lot of blurry, blurry images and a lot of terribly lit images too. Just a really good example there of that. Um, let's go further down. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, I would almost say that some of these images are like kind of interesting, but I do feel like the blurriness of them and uh, the way that they're lit probably really kind of <laughs> takes away from the <laughs> conceptual aspect. I, I remember being really proud of these photos too um, after this day. I was, I know it was just something that I'd always wanted to try. It was just a really good day of experimentation and for my 19 year old self at the time, I was just really proud of these photos. I mean, I look back on them now and it's very, I think it's funny in some aspects to, to see what kind of work I was doing. Um, but, you know, we all have to learn, we all have to grow, we all have to start somewhere. And this is basically where I started. So, I mean, there's a few, I mean, <laughs> a great photo. Um, I did also shoot, you're probably noticing that I shot a lot. Like I would just not stop. I would never stop. It was just continuously shooting. I'd end up with usually over a thousand images from the day. Um, every time I did photo shoots, like I would just shoot nonstop. And I remember it being just so painful to go through the images afterwards because there would just be so many for me to go through and, and to choose. Like I would end up editing like 50 photos at a time to send off and Man, that was just like a lot of effort back then. But anyway, I'm gonna go straight down to the images that we're actually gonna be looking at today in terms of the ones that I'll be editing. Cause this is kind of like, in terms of like more of a timeless image that could still be current today, I feel like this was probably one of the best from the shoot. Uh, because I realized from a lot of the other shoots in 2011 that I did, I deleted the, the original images. So I really couldn't go back and edit them. Uh, that was something that I like to do to save space on my hard drive rather than just getting another hard drive. So I don't have a lot of original images left from uh, that time when I was shooting, uh, but I do have some from this photo shoot. So we are going to pick an image here and the one that I have actually chosen already is going to be this one here. And like I said, it's purely because it's kind of more of a timeless shot. It could have been taken today, I guess. I thought it was still kind of a cute image and it's just like, it's not a weird expression. It's not weird. Well, I mean, it's a little bit weird lighting, but it's very underexposed once again. I'm not really sure why, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and edit this photo today and I'll show you the edit that I actually did at the time. So we're gonna compare what kind of editing style I had at the time as well. So this, is the original edit of that photo. I'm going to critique my photo from nine years ago now and say that I feel like I was really into the very heavy editing style back then. It was quite popular. Um, I mean, photography, to be honest, as a thing back in 2011, wasn't really that popular overall. Uh, like they never even had it at my, my school that I used to go to as like an elective subject. But as far as cool went, I guess this is kind of like the types of presets that were cool back then. It was very heavy editing, very retro um, kind of stuff that was on DeviantArt too. And uh, yeah, this is kind of my edit. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's the worst edit that I've probably ever done, but I do feel like her skin is looking a little bit sickly in the way that I've applied the yellow kind of toned effect. And I just feel like it's a bit too dark in areas. It's quite dim. I, it's just not really my style of image, I guess, for these days when I'm editing. So I'm gonna edit the photo in the way that I guess I would edit it today. So we're gonna go to the original image now, which is this one here. So you can see the before and after there of the one that I did. I mean, it's not the worst. Like I said, not the worst I've ever done, but still not my favorite. So we are going to get straight into editing. And for this, Thank God, I don't actually have to do much skin editing uh, because it's a bit further away. The face is taking up less of the photo, so we're not gonna be doing dodge and burn for this. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are really happy about that. Okay, so I have my graphics tablet at the ready and I'm gonna zoom in. We are not gonna do much skin editing, as I just said. Although I do really want to remove this big light patch on her forehead because I don't know, it's just really bothering me for the, from the time I saw this image, it's all I can kind of look at when I look at the photo. It just really bothers me that it's right on her forehead. It's very apparent and very much there. So we are going to try and get rid of that in a very easy manner, I would say. 
Um, I'm actually just going to duplicate the background copy layer for this because I feel like we're going to be able to do this pretty simply. I'm going to get the patch tool from the side here and I'm actually just going to circle around that and move it to maybe an area on her cheek and around this area as well and just moving it down. So I'm just going to kind of continue patching that area. I know this isn't the most technically perfect thing to do in Photoshop, but that's okay. We're not really going to spend a lot more time on the skin than we have to here. So I'm just going to smooth that over there, get that little patch there. And just up the top there as well. So I'm going to do a quick before and after there because you guys can see what I've done and how much that just kind of takes the attention away from her forehead. So before and after. So I feel like that really does help a lot. Uh, I'm also just going to go over a couple of little areas here with the patch tool and just remove a couple of little bumps there. So honestly, like I said, this isn't exactly the most least destructive way of editing, but it's okay. I'm just enjoying not being able to do dodge and burn today for once. <laughs> so let me have my fun guys. Um, okay. And then I feel like that's kind of all we really need to do to the skin. I might just kind of fix up that corner there. And I feel like that's kind of good. There's really not much we have to do. I don't want to take too much texture away from the face either, being that it is so taking up such a small part of the image. Uh, the more that I edit, the more it's going to be really apparent. So that's fine. We're going to leave that as is. And then I'm going to start brightening it up and giving it more of a color grade. So I want to get the curves layer up first. I'm going to get a curves adjustment layer up and I'm going to make it quite a bit brighter and move the line just enough. And by the way, we do have to be quite careful here with editing this image. This is not a raw image. I did not used to shoot on raw, so uh, <laughs> it's just a JPEG image. Gonna have to be kind of careful of how far I go with this edit. So I'm just kind of gonna give it a bit of contrast there. I think that's kind of good. I mean, that's a pretty big difference. They're just using curves, so I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm going to get a black and white layer up and we're going to see if we can set this to luminosity. And I want to see if this kind of makes much of a difference. It does a little bit. I'm just going to move the yellows, reds, and maybe a bit of the magentas down as well, but not too much because the reds are really affecting the roses. And I usually use this to give more depth to the skin tones. So if it's going to affect it too much, we might have to mask that out a little bit. Or we can kind of... It's not really affecting the skin tone too much. So I'm just going to leave it there. But I actually kind of like that effect that that layer's given. It has given a little bit more depth back to the skin tone. So I'm happy with that. What we're going to do next is maybe introduce a solid color. And we're going to test a couple of different blending modes with it too. So I'm going to go up to solid color here. And I kind of feel like I want it to be a relatively warm image. So we're going to go for kind of like a warm pinky tone. Maybe, or even red. And kind of probably somewhere around that sort of color scheme. And I'm going to change the blending mode on this. So we want to see how some of these look. So soft light might be okay at a lower opacity. Some of these are going to look a bit strange, but I'm feeling like as well, Color Dodge might be the way to go, but what we're going to do with that is click on Color Dodge and then really bring it back with the opacity. So we're going to kind of move it down to around, say, 30%. I'm just going to turn that on and off. And I'm really liking how that's looking, but I feel like it is a little bit too bright still. So I'm going to double click on the color itself and just kind of like move around in the same reds kind of section but make it a little bit of a deeper red so i actually really like how that looks so i'm 
more than happy with leaving that how it is. I'm also going to create a luminosity mask with levels as I usually do with my editing. So I'm gonna go into the channels, hold down control on the keyboard and click on RGB. And that's gonna give me a selection of the highlights of the image. And this is the way that I like to kind of brighten up uh, those parts a little bit more and create a little bit more contrast that way. So now that we've got our selection, I will go down to the adjustment layers and go up to levels and it will automatically give me a mask with that selection. So I'm going to just pull the shadows across a little bit and highlights, I'm not gonna tweak too much. Just slightly at the edge there. So you guys can see what that layer has done. It's just given it a little bit more depth and I think as maybe kind of a finishing touch, I'm just gonna get another black and white layer. And I like this method of just desaturating the image a little bit. I'm just gonna bring down the opacity though to around, say like 8% looks pretty good. It just really kind of dulls it a little bit more and, and gives it that little bit more of a vintage effect. Speaking of vintage, I really feel the need to put a grain on this and I don't get to put grain on images very often with beauty stuff. So, so I'm going to put some grain on there today. So I think one thing I'm going to do first though is sharpen the image. So I'm going to drag the background layer into the new layer button, go to filter other high pass. And I'm going to move the radius down to about four. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and move the opacity down a little bit to say, maybe about 60% for this image by the looks of it. So that's just kind of sharpened the image up. I'll zoom in so you guys can see that. It's really just sharpened the edges a little bit, given it a little bit more definition, which is exactly what we wanted. And then as a finishing touch, I think I'm gonna add a grain. So I'm going to duplicate the background copy layer again I'm gonna to go to filter, noise, add noise. And I'm happy to have it quite high at around 17%, that's fine. Press okay. Then I'm gonna to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. And two pixels is fine for this. I'm just basically softening the noise a little bit because I always tend to find without doing the blur over the noise, it does tend to make it a little bit too sharp for my liking and I just prefer doing it this way. So we'll leave it at two pixels and press okay. And then I can kind of tweak my opacity. So I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see it's a little bit too crunchy for my liking, but I'm gonna just move the grain down a little bit. Just so we've got kind of like a nice soft grain. And there is my finished image. So I'm going to take a snapshot and I'm gonna show you guys the before and after. So this is the before. And that is the after. And I'm also going to do a comparison of my previous edit as well from 2011 at the end of this video so you guys can see the difference between all three. So I'm actually really happy with this edit overall. I think it's a very quick edit for me. I'm not used to doing edits this quickly. I forgot what it was like when I was editing uh, some of my location shots. It was definitely a quicker process through editing in Photoshop. But I kind of like how this turned out and I'm sort of happy with it at the moment. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed looking back through some of my older work. And I, if you would like me to do more videos like this one, please let me know in the comments section below. I would like to do more videos where I go back and re-edit some of my older photos and show you guys what I sort of did back then. I think it's kind of interesting to always look back on your older work and see how you've grown. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.